Okay, hi, welcome to episode four of Dot Two Newbies Hits and Misses. So we're now on to Tom Baker, the longest running doctor out of all of them. And it was a little bit tough to try to decide which episodes to recommend and not recommend, but thankfully there was quite a wide scope in one way. So it did kind of help a little bit with um, providing plenty of options for both sides of it, but equally made it difficult to narrow it down. But I got there, so um, we'll just go straight into it. So three episodes that I would not advise watching um, if you want to get into the series, so we'll go into it. First one is the Mask of Man Dragora. Um, this is during the sort of era which did have Sarah Jane Smith, but again, this episode just it had something that it just didn't really feel as though the story was complete when they made the episode uh, for me anyway. Uh, so it just kind of felt a little bit like they were just going on with it, um, and it didn't really have anything too special. To kind of show that it was a you know compelling story compared to what there was before with the likes of you know Genesis of the Daleks, Terror of the Zygons, Pyramids of Mars, whatever else. Um, this one just didn't you hold a candle by comparison and it just ended up being a lot weaker in that sort of state. So yeah, it's another one of these ones where it kind of drags out, doesn't really do much, and isn't really anything that special. So I would avoid that one for that reason personally. Uh, next one to avoid is Underworld. Uh, now, admittedly, there were a lot of uh, issues behind the scenes, apparently, in this documentary, I think, on the DVD that tries to explain it. But, again, it just kind of ends up being all over the show. The acting is pretty poor. Um, then just, it doesn't feel like a good Doctor Who story. It just kind of felt a little bit incomplete, as it were. And they probably were trying to save some money up for the following episode, The Invasion of Time, which, I think there's a lot more to it, but this one just kind of feels like, like I said, incomplete. Nothing really to go for it, and it just felt very, very cheap, as you can probably see from it. I mean, again, I know Dot Who's a budget, a budget series, but this just demonstrates the budget stuff to an extreme. And then finally, for the ones to avoid, Ledger Hive. First one of John Nathan Turner's uh, run as the producer, and again, it just felt very, very dull. Um, the Fuamazi looked really kind of silly. It was big bug, um, so they mean like chameleon monster things uh it just it didn't really feel like it was really going for anything and then just the overall tone of it it was a big change compared to what they had in the 70s and it just was like i said just boring more than anything else and you don't want to be bored when you watch a doctor who story you want to be fixed on it so yeah easy with those ones and the good episodes i was kind of making a rule for myself to not include just a whole bunch of them from Tom Baker's first batch of episodes because those ones are generally considered to be some of the best ones on a lot of people's top 10 lists with, like I've just mentioned, Genesis, Pyramids, um, which I haven't actually included for this list specifically because it's one of those, I think it's one of these things that is worth looking at certain other stories to appreciate the other ones that are sort of around them at the same time more so, and that's why I've chosen for that kind of era, The Seeds of Doom. It's a fantastic episode, and a lot of people have said about how great it is as a story. Um, features um, John Chalice in it as the villain, who British people would probably recognise as Boise from Only Fools and Horses. But a very good premise, just the whole thing about, you know, greed saturating people's thought process and just gets out of control. Um, very dramatic cliffhangers and stuff, just you feel gripped of the story all the way through. Are they going to make it through? Is everything going to be okay? Everything like that. So... Yeah, um, and I deliberately chose just the one from that run of episodes of Tom Baker's. And the rest of the ones I got for recommendations are from past that era. Um, the next one for that is The Deadly Assassin. The only original story to not have a companion. And it does a really good job. Um, very, very much the Doctor being isolated on his own. In a lot of cases, again, dramatic cliffhangers, you see that he struggles a lot without any help and um, just very ruthless with everything going on with it. And the master in this is at his, probably, possibly his darkest. He's just that relentless. We're just trying to make sure that he can get the job done, even if it means the doctor is out of the picture. Um, so that's it for that one. And then the final one uh, for recommendations for Tom Baker's era. One of my personal favourites, again, is The City of Death. Again, just very well written. Love the on-location shots of when they're in Paris. Um, 
just a very good chemistry of characters. Um, very good cameo from uh, John Cleese in this. And just overall really, really fun watch. And just you can never really get bored of it. It's very intriguing, particularly with the sort of motivations that the villain has in this. So a very good reason to watch it like that. Um, so yeah, but then again, like I said, with Tom Baker being the longest running Doctor, he has got a lot of good episodes. So there's quite a few of them that you can't really go to and miss with, but equally there are other ones that it's really not best to start off with because it's very sort of either mediocre or just really not a good representation of the series. But yeah, that's it for those stories, and I shall catch you next time for when I do Peter Davidson. So, so long, take care.